It's my pleasure to uh, introduce Pankaj Daga, who is a computational medicinal chemist at Simulations Plus. Uh, Pankaj has been involved in a lot of model building uh, activities. Um, so um, he's going to be able to give us a, a, a perspective on a specific topic associated to uh, mute the MUT risk function in AdMet Predictor. So Pankaj, uh, thank you for your contribution and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eric, and thank you everyone for uh, being here in this uh, special virtual conference. Today, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what efforts we are putting in to update our new risk in the AdMet predictor. Just to give you an idea uh, or a brief introduction about mutagenicity. <clears throat> a mutagen is a physical or a chemical agent that changes the genetic material. Right? When we talk about genetic material, we are talking about the DNA, and thus it increases the frequency of mutation. Uh, AIMS test has been widely used, or the most frequently used uh, mutagenicity test, uh, which was introduced by Bruce Ames in Berkeley in the 70s. And according to this test, the chemical is tested uh, for its mutagenicity against the strain of uh, Salmonella typhoidium. And if uh, I'm not going to give the details of it, but if the AIMS test is negative, the compound is called uh, non-mutagenic. If the AIMS test is found positive, then compound is called mutagenic. The OECD is Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. They have devised guidelines, they call it PG47, test guidelines 471. According to these guidelines, the substance must be tested in five different strains with or without mammalian uh, liver homogenate. And mostly the one which is used is a rat liver homogenate. And these strains include TNIT 800, 1535, and any one of these uh, 97 or 1537, and any one of these 102 or WP2. We have five um, We have included totally 11 uh, individual models in the predictor. Especially, uh, 10 are 10 models are coming from those five strands which have been defined, which have been uh, provided as a guideline in OECD guidelines. Five strands with and without S9 fractions. And one of the model was built using NIHS data set, which was provided to us by NIHS Japan. They have compiled a list of 12,000 chemicals all over the industries, along with their metagenicity potential. Uh, the output in these all 11 models is positive versus negative. We also have another consolidated model, which we call it MUTRISC. This is a qualitative estimate of overall mutagenicity. And here we combine all the individual positive predictions with different weights. And the range for MUTRISC is zero to three. Around 85% of the compounds from World Drug Index have been predicted to have MUTRISC less than one, which is our threshold in calling the compound to be mutagenic or non-mutagenic. Now, why do we have to focus on mute risk? In the regulatory context, the compound fails the AIMS test if we have positive test even in a single strain. So if we apply similar logic in computational toxicology here, if we can see that all these drugs would have failed if any of these strains are called positive. But if we look at the mute, overall mute risk, what we have found and mute risk with threshold of one, we can see that all these compounds were saved from being labeled toxic. And that is why actually we have been um, focusing on developing mute risk uh, with appropriate um, contributions from different strains. How do we calculate mute risk? As I said, each individual mutagenic prediction or positive prediction, it contributes 0.6 volt to the mute risk. And 98, TA98 and TF100, they are, they have been shown to be mechanistically overlapping results. So we have we have allotted them only 50% of this 0.6, so it is only 0.3 volt. 
but I like to focus on something which is the in mutual independence of these models. These models are not mutually independent. And that's why you can see that when we are talking about the TA97 with S9, that is metabolic after metabolic conversion, we do not provide, we call it, we give a vote of 0.6 only if it is positive after metabolic conversion, but if it is negative before metabolic conversion. So these models are not completely mutual or mutually independent. International workshop on genotoxicity testing, they, they, they have workshops every four years and the latest workshop they had was in 2017. And they have published all their proceedings or the meeting reports in December, 2019. And one of the interesting paper from this uh, proceeding was uh, all, if all the bacterial strains which are mentioned in OECT test guidelines are required. So just to give you a pictorial representation of these, that paper, we are talking about five different strains for mutagenicity. The conclusion from the paper mentions that TA100 and 1535, they have overlapping results. Rather, TA100 is derived from 1535. So testing the mutagenicity in TA100 is in, it would suffice. Second important conclusion was of the all mutagens tested or detected by TG471 strain panel, 93% of the mutagen, 93% of the compounds were mutagenic in either TA98 and or TA100. So we can just focus on that, okay, if we are testing 100 molecules, 93, compound, 93 compounds are positive in one of these two. And the last and important finding was TA97, 102, and WP2. These strains could be removed from the test guidelines with little or with little loss of sensitivity. So these two strains have very little importance in, find, in finding these mutagens. They do find out only five to 6% of the compounds. So we have decided to update our existing mute risk so, uh, by introducing these findings, which were reported in the recent paper, and where we are focusing on TA 198 and 1535 should be given higher weights, or 97 or 102 should be given lower weights. Secondly, we have to take into consideration the interactions amongst TA 98, 100, and 1535. If all of them are positive, we should give them some little higher score. If any one or two are positives, then it should get relatively light, lower score. When we started working on it, we decided to use an external test set to build a PLS model. And there was no manual intervention involved. All the entire model was built using our admit modeler. All we had to do was provide the weights, prepare a manual file of the new risk. And if we look at the proposed mute risk 11, which is the newer risk, we can see that these weights are allotted by our model. And at the end, we can see S98 or M98 getting higher score compared to 97 models or 102 models. Similarly, we can see that these are the combinations which we were talking about. And these combinations do get are allotted higher weights by the PLS equation than the individual contributions. So how how this, how is the performance? Let's look at the performance of these new risk models on the Hansen data set, which was compiled as a mutagenicity data set and it contains over 6,000 compounds. We can see that in case of new risk 10, which is our existing new risk, we have sensitivity of 80% and specificity of 67%. I apologize for this. Um, point being shifted, but this is 67%. And here, while when we are looking at the predicted activity, the compound is called as positive if the mute risk of the compound is less than, oh, sorry, it should be greater than one and negative if the mute risk is less than or equal to one. So in this case, what we have found was 
almost 80% of the compounds were positive compounds were predicted correctly and 67% of the negative compounds were predicted correctly remaining we are talking about around 25% compounds were predicted incorrectly although this new test gives us a better uh, idea about mutagenicity our new updated new test gives us 22% uh, false rate or 78% accuracy and slightly better performance than new test which is an existing one <clears throat> what happens is if we compare these two new models we can see that 203 positive compounds that were labeled safe by our new test then but now mute risk 11 which is a new mute risk is able to identify them correctly same thing happened over the other side there were 200 around 300 compounds which were predict which which are negative compounds but they were flagged mutagenic by mute risk 10 but we could save these 300 compounds with our new rules and if we compare the performance of these mute risks in um on our the world drug index subset we this is a subset from world drug index which is hand curator subset of contain, containing 27 2270 compounds what we find is uh, almost 88% of the compounds sorry 85% of the compounds were predicted to be having uh, non mutagenic in mutrisc and our new mute risk is suggesting that we have almost 90% of the compounds which are non mutagenic i would like to remind you that these all are existing drugs in the market so they have been tested to be non mutagenic of course there is an error of 10% in new model compared to 15% error in our previous mute risk so overall uh, similarly if we look at the other plot which is beyond uh, defined threshold plot where we can see that almost 11% of the compounds this is uh, i believe these are the same same two uh, plots with different uh, uh, shown in a different ways 11% of the compounds from world drug index are having were predicted to have higher mute risk compared to 15%. So we were able to save or we were able to improve our mute risk model and save more compounds being labeled as toxic in with our existing uh, with our new model compared to the existing model. And this progress is in this is the uh, we are still pro, we are still working in updating these models but for now we believe that the new new mute risk model is definitely uh giving us better results so just to give you a confusion consolidation of these results from various strains in single mute risk what we have done provides a better prediction of mutagenicity of single molecules than the individual molecules and the latest iwgt findings were included in our new mute risk and it they suggest us what is the relative importance of various strains so these new mute risk is found to perform better in identifying these toxic compounds than the existing mute risk and the work will continue uh, in future actually so we have a good team of chem informatics which have been supporting me all the time uh, if you have any questions please feel free to um, ask right now or you can send an email to me or uh, info at simulationspeech.com All right. Thank you. Thank you Pankaj for this very nice uh, presentation. I think we're right on the time. I actually I don't see any questions in the chat or in the Q&A pane. So um and um so yeah, given the 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 time constraint, I will encourage anyone who's got specific questions about uh mute risks or the related functions to uh, either send you an email or send a request to uh, info@simulations-plus.com. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. Yep, you're welcome.